Hey everybody, I am out at the pond today to talk to you about dragonflies. But I'm also gonna to talk to you about one other insect as well that sometimes people think are dragonflies, but they're actually damselflies. So what is the difference? So a dragonfly looks just like this. So it has some different body parts. So it has its head, has its thorax, which is sort of this middle part of the body, and an abdomen, which is this long part. So on the dragonfly, its abdomen is actually pretty thick and long. It also has wings that all come out to the side, just like that of an airplane. But a damselfly looks kind of similar. You might see it sometimes. And they could be a little bit smaller, but if you notice, the abdomen is a little bit longer and very skinny, and these wings are tucked in the back. They don't stand out to the side like the airplane, but it still also has a head and a thorax and an abdomen. So these insects tend to live in wetland areas like this. So you might find them at a lake, you might find them in a river or a pond, anywhere you find some fresh water. You're not probably going to see them at the beach unless you're in a marsh area. Um, and the reason you usually see them a lot around wet areas is because this is where their life begins. So what do you mean? What do I mean by life begins? So when I was showing you these pictures, these are the adults. These are the adults, but they got to start off as a baby, right? So how do insects start as babies? Do they come out of their mommy's bellies? Not quite like that. It doesn't work that way when you're an insect. Instead, when you are a dragonfly or a damselfly, you are first born in the water, like out in that pond right there. So an adult will go, will lay its eggs, on a piece of grass or some kind of aquatic plant. So, can't see it too well from here, but may come, crawl down onto a blade of grass, usually somewhere along the edges of a pond like this, and the adult female will lay her eggs on that, on that piece of grass or plant or whatever's coming out of, um, the water there and it'd be a bunch of little tiny eggs so so tiny about the size of the end of this piece of grass right here really really tiny and those eggs will stay in the water and the same thing happens with the damselfly too and eventually those eggs will hatch have you ever noticed what how a butterfly likes to grow up. So butterflies also come from eggs, but they go through a process called metamorphosis, where they go from egg to larva, which is kind of like the little caterpillar, right? To pupa, where they're kind of in like a cocoon or a chrysalis, depending on if it's a butterfly or a moth. And then they hatch out and they're a butterfly or a moth, right? So metamorphosis is four stages. So egg, larva, pupa, and adult, okay? But a dragonfly or damselfly, they don't have four stages. They have three stages. We call that incomplete metamorphosis. So what happens, again, that dragonfly will lay its eggs on the aquatic plant out in the water Okay, so it's usually kind of where the surface of the water is because as an adult, they're not gonna go underwater and swim. They're gonna be kind of on the surface, but they're gonna lay their eggs down in the water and they're gonna kind of tilt this part of the abdomen down into the water to be able to lay those eggs. So they're gonna lay the eggs, but then what's gonna hatch out next is what we call more of that Kind of like a larval stage of the dragonfly but 
we call it a nymph instead. So it goes and it turns into a nymph that looks like this. But when it's born, it's going to be itty bitty. But it's going to start to grow up. It's never going to really go into a true cocoon. But instead, what it does is it grows, and as it gets bigger, it sheds its exoskeleton, which is kind of like the outside skin. You might think of a snake shedding its skin. This kind of does the same thing. So it will crawl out of the skin as it gets bigger, and it'll keep getting bigger, and it'll keep shedding its skin or shedding its exoskeleton until one day it's gonna be so big that it's gonna climb out of its skin and it's gonna be an adult. So again, it goes from egg to nymph to adult. So how many stages is that? Well, that's egg, nymph, adult, three stages. So we call that incomplete metamorphosis. And that's what happens with the damselfly too but they look a little bit different. So remember the damselfly looks just like this, but its nymph looks like this. We can kind of tell it apart because it's got these three little tails on the back. And this is the dragonfly nymph. Dragonfly nymph, hmm, take a look at that. How do they look different or how do they look alike? Wow. So when you take, when you, whenever you find one, maybe in the water, you would definitely notice that this one is much bigger than the damselfly nymph. What other differences do you notice? Or maybe how do they look alike? Let's do that with our adults as well. Let's put these side by side for a minute. Can you see some of the differences that I was pointing out earlier? And how are they possibly alike? Maybe count the feet, eyes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I am going to come on over to the pond and I'm gonna do a little dipping and I am going to look for some of these nymphs in the water, maybe some eggs the eggs are really, 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 really hard to find because again, they are so, so, so tiny. So I usually will find maybe a nymph. So this time of year, you don't really see too many dragonflies or damselflies buzzing around. I've actually been out here quite a bit and I have not seen one, but that doesn't mean they aren't there. So a lot of these eggs might've been laid back in the fall and are now waiting to hatch just in time for spring. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna take a dip and we're gonna see what we can find. All right, so you ready to check it out? Let's go. Okay, so I have done some dipping with that special net over there. This is my truly scientific equipment that I have. My net, my buckets, and yogurt cups, a spoon, this is, how I take some samples of the pond and kind of act like a scientist to kind of do a little research and see what's in here. And today was sort of my insect inventory, but I was looking for those dragonfly and damselfly nymphs. So when I came down to the pond, I came down and I wanted to try to find a place in this pond where I thought might be the best location to find young insects like that. So where I, might, where I may be able to find some of the eggs, some of the nymphs. And like I told you before, those eggs are laid on some of the grasses or the plants inside of the water. Can you see those plants that are sticking out of the water there? And if you look on top of the water here, there's lots of different plant material as well. You can see some of the leaves down at the bottom of the pond. Now these are usually the best spots to find them. 
Why do you think that might be? Why do you think it, I might find some of those things? Well, first of all, those eggs are laid on a lot of these plants. But also, once they hatch and the nymphs are out and about, they love to come in and use this area to hide in. This is the best place to hide from any sort of predators who may want to come and eat them. So this is the best spot. So I did some dipping in there and I found a couple things. So let's come back and take a look. So when I brought over my net, I put everything into a bucket like this. And this is some of the stuff that we could find them in. And I was able to find both a damselfly and a dragonfly nymph over here at the pond. So let's take a look first at the damselfly nymph. Okay, so here we have the damselfly nymph. Take a look at that. Crawling around in my little bucket here. You see that head? Look at all the legs. How many legs do you see? Since it's an insect, it should have six legs. See if you can find all six legs on this damselfly nymph. But it's also got a tail on the end. It's got more than one tail, which is one thing that identifies it as a damselfly nymph. See if you can count how many tails it has. It's gonna come back around here. Oop, look at it swim. Oh, there we go. So it's hard to notice, but it actually has three tails. Right now you can only see the two. So damselfly nymphs, when they are at this stage and they're living in the water, they have a little bit of a different diet than they do um, when they are out of the water. So at this stage, they love to eat a lot of other insect larvae that are in the water. So they might eat some mosquito larvae. So mosquitoes also start their life off in, in the water as well as a lot of other flies. Um, they'll eat some tadpoles, which are baby frogs. So frogs also start their life cycle off in the water as well. So they'll eat a lot of tadpoles, so little baby frogs. Um, and sometimes they may eat some small fish. And the dragonfly nymphs will also do the same thing. It's kind of interesting to see how it, how it moves in the water. Hmm, when you go swimming, do you move like a damselfly nymph? If you get to go swimming this summer, you have to see if you can if you can swim like one. I don't know if you could see those um, eyes on its head on either side on the left and the right. They're like big black dots on either side. So their eyes are not like our eyes. They are compound eyes. So they have several eyes on each side. Gives them excellent vision. All right, let's uh, move on to the dragonfly nymph. So, so here we have the dragonfly nymph. Hmm, does it look uh, different, kind of similar to the damselfly nymph? How would you describe this? How many legs do you see? So when I look at it, I kind of almost think it looks like a spider. But spiders have eight legs. They are in a group of species called arachnids but since the dragonfly is an insect it has six legs can you see all six 
Also on its backside, do you notice any tails like we saw on the damselfly nymph? Coming a little closer here. And one thing that's really hard to see, maybe if you take a close look, if you look at the head, You'll see kind of the black eyes on either side. Again, it has compound eyes as well, but it has two little tiny antennae coming out from its from its head. Can you see those antennae? So the dragonfly nymph, like the damselfly nymph, is going to eat a lot of other insect larvae. So it may even eat a damselfly larvae. How about that? Um, and it eats some tadpoles and it can eat some small fish. Now, both of these insects, once they live on land and when they live in the water, are preyed on by many birds, frogs, turtles, fish. So even if say the dragonfly ate a baby frog which is called a tadpole guess what when it gets to be an adult or even this is bigger sometimes the frogs will eat them so they kind of get back at them so when this dragonfly nymph moves do you notice if it moves any different than the damselfly nymph. I wonder why it would move differently. Could it be because it doesn't have any tails? Take one closer look at this dragonfly nymph. You can actually see some other little tiny insects moving around in there that it might eat. So both dragonflies and um, damselflies are considered carnivores. Carnivores are animals that eat only meat. So that's why they eat a lot of other insects, and, you know, the tadpoles and the fish. So once they're living on land, they're also going to be eating a lot of other insects. So before we move on and learn more about the habitat that dragonflies and damselflies live in, I just wanted to quickly review um, what we just learned and some of the differences. So again, the dragonfly looks like this. Remember that thicker abdomen, wings to the side, larger body altogether. And its nymph looks like this. So it's much bigger than that of the damselfly. Does not have those three tails. Almost looks like little nubs that they have here instead, but a whole lot bigger, a lot thicker, bigger head, bigger abdomen. And the damselfly, it's more like that. Remember, wings all the way to the back, not out to the sides, really skinny abdomen down below but its body in general is a lot smaller. Same with its nymph, which is a lot smaller, a lot thinner, skinnier. They also have these three defined tails in the back and the head's a little bit smaller. So that's just a review of the differences that we were looking at earlier. But now I'd like to talk more about the habitat that they live in. 
So a habitat is an area where an animal lives. So we might call it an animal's home. And in a habitat, the animal has everything that it needs in order to survive. So it needs things like shelter. So kind of a place to get out of the, out of some really bad weather, but also to um, stay safe and protected maybe from other predators. So from other animals that may want to eat it. Um, also, um, the habitat will have food and will have water. And usually there's sort of like just space for it to be able to move in, feel safe in. Um, so those things are all in an animal's habitat. So a habitat for a damselfly or a dragonfly is gonna be a wetland area. So somewhere you're gonna have a body of water. So you're gonna have like pond, you're gonna have a river or a lake, stream, Somewhere there's some water that is either collected or is moving throughout um, the land. So you're not gonna find them so much in um, the saltwater areas again, maybe in some of the marshy areas, so saltwater marshes you would, but not really like at the beach, at the ocean, um, but in these freshwater areas that are all around here and probably around where you live. So I have a story that I'm gonna read to learn more about that habitat and where they live and, and who else lives there. So it may be the animal's home, but they share it with many other different animals and plants in the area. And this story will tell you a little bit more about the areas where they live. So this book is called Near One Cattail. Cattail is a plant that a lot of times we might find in kind of a marshy area. Um, swampy area, um, not necessarily a saltwater marsh, but um, definitely um, around some of our more wetland, like swampy, more some of the river areas around here. But the cattail, I always like to call our corn dog plant because it kind of looks like a corn dog on a stick, except it's an actual plant. Um, you won't be able to find them until a little bit later in the in the summer. You might find some old ones left over from the fall. But right now, all these grasses are starting to grow up in our wetland areas and will be ready come summertime. So this is called Near One Cattail, and it's by Anthony Fredericks. So, here is a world where tadpoles play and crowds of bugs dance through the day. With lilies and duckweed everywhere, some long-legged birds and crayfish pair. Among the rushes where herons repose, a fuzzy cattail flowers and grows. So look at some of the other things that you see in this area. Some things you would definitely find near a wetland in your area particularly some of these herons right here. This is the cattail. Doesn't that look like a corn dog? <laughs> the marshy land with a layer of ooze was explored by a girl in high top shoes. A quizzical thought crossed her face what creatures live in this bog, boggy place? Who do you think might live there? When she looked at the wildlife one by one, as they skittered and scattered in the noonday sun, she discovered a kingdom wild and grand, a web of life in a soggy land. There are the frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound in this waterlogged scene.
Sunbathing turtles on a moss-covered log bask in the warmth of this mug muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound in this waterlogged scene. Do you happen to see a dragonfly in this picture? You see one right over here at the cattail. So a lot of those dragonflies and damselflies will actually lay their eggs on the green part, the grassy part of the cattail a lot of times in the water. A zip zipping dragonfly skitters all day, hunting mosquitoes and other small prey. Past sunbathing turtles on a moss covered log who bask in the warmth of this mug muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land all swampy and green, creatures abound in this waterlogged scene. Brown feathered ducks with paddling feet poke near the shore for some food they can eat. A zip-zipping dragonfly skitters all day, hunting mosquitoes and other small prey, past sunbathing turtles on a moss-covered log who bask in the warmth of this mug-muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound in this water-logged scene. This is the muskrat with a round furry head asleep in her lodge on a dry grassy bed while brown feathered ducks with paddling feet poke near the shore for some food they can eat. A zip zipping dragonfly skitters all day hunting mosquitoes and other small prey past sunbathing turtles on a moss covered log who bask in the warmth of this mug muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound to this waterlogged scene. A paddling beetle with its legs long and brown scoots over the water on its back, upside down. Close to the muskrat with a round furry head who sleeps in her lodge on a dry grassy bed while brown feathered ducks with paddling feet poke near the shore for some food they can eat. A zip zipping dragonfly skitters all day hunting mosquitoes and other small prey past sunbathing turtles on a moss covered log who bask in the warmth of this mug muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies. Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound in this waterlogged scene. A sunbathing snake lies curled in the heat, then slips under water for fish it can eat, near a paddling beetle with long leg and brown, who scoots over water on its back upside down, close to the muskrat with a round furry head, who sleeps in her lodge on a dry grassy bed while brown feathered ducks with paddling feet poke near the shore for some food they can eat. A zip zipping dragonfly skitters all day, hunting mosquitoes and other small prey past sunbathing turtles on a moss covered log who bask in the warmth of this mug muggy bog. Neighbors to frogs with big bulging eyes who whip out their tongues to capture some flies Within a rich land, all swampy and green, creatures abound in this water log scene. See the tadpole over here? That's the baby frog. Have you been noticing it in some of the other, other pictures as well? Here's a medley of critters who swim, soar, or crawl in this sog soggy home that protects one and all. It's a marvelous place to explore and observe 
a grand web of life to cherish and preserve. Now I challenge you all this summer and even in the springtime, but more in the summertime once all these adults have hatched out to go out and visit some wetland areas and see if you can identify a lot of different dragonflies and damselflies. There are many, many different species and you can find a lot of resources online to be able to identify some of them. But um, if you do have, um, a phone or a, an iPad or some sort of electronic device um, where you can download the app iNaturalist um, and go out and maybe with your family take some pictures of some different dragonflies and damselflies and you could try to catch them yourself. Just be really, really gentle with them. Um, and with that um, app, you can actually take a picture and download it and it help you identify the species it is. But there are many, many different kinds and lots and lots of different colors and they're so beautiful and it's really nice to take the time to identify a few of them. So I challenge you all to do that this summer and see how many different kinds you can find and how many different colors you can find too. So I look forward to hearing more about what you found um, come fall after the summer has passed. Um, I would love to hear about the different kinds that you that you find over the summertime. So I hope you enjoyed it and um, thanks so much.